everybody, how you doing today? It's Adelike again, I'm back. Um, today, we're going to be talking about metabolic acidosis. Um, first, I want to give uh, credit to the author of Step Up to Medicine, which is the book that I use. Um, I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's the best book to study for medicine. I use it for my third year rotation, uh, even second year. Um, it's an excellent book. So this is where I get all the information I try to teach you guys from. Uh, it's really, really useful. So um, it's written by uh, Steven Agabiji. And um, make sure you get this book. It's going to help you out a lot. But my job is not to read what's in the book for you. Because everybody can read. It's no point doing that. My job is to take what's in the book and make it look like it's nothing. Alright, so today we're talking about metabolic acidosis. Uh, first of all, you know, I think we need a system here. So, this is how you should start thinking as a medical student. I know they don't teach you this in medical school. They want you to learn like 10 years down the line. But, hey, let's start learning right now. So, every disease process, your job is first, learn the definition. So, today we're going to know what the definition of metabolic acidosis is. Then, we're going to move on to the pathophysiology. We're going to talk about the causes of metabolic acidosis. What does the patient, what's the patient going to present with? How do we make the diagnosis and how do we treat it? That's it. We're just like mechanics. We look for stuff, we fix it, we live it alone, okay? So, definition. So, what's the definition of metabolic acidosis? The definition basically is any change physiologically in your body that causes your bicarb to be decreased, causing a decrease in your pH in your blood. That's just a simple definition. So anything that makes your bicarbonate in your blood, which is supposed to be a buffer, and makes your blood pH to decrease. Remember I tried to give you an introduction to uh, um, acid-base disorders last time? I kind of have this little chart to kind of give me you know, a little thought process so I don't forget a few things. I told you the normal bicarb is 24 in your body. So all the time bicarb should be within that range. And your blood pH should always be between 7.35 and 7.45, right? So any change in that, if it goes towards the left, like it's less than anything, if it's less than 7.35, in this case, it will be what? Acidosis. Now, if it's greater than 7.45, it's alkalosis, which we're not going to talk about. This discussion is all about acidosis. So acid is seven, less than 7.35. So, now that's the definition of metabolic acidosis. Now, what is the pathophysiology? And this is where the bread and butter is really going to hit you. So, the pathophysiology of the disease starts with decreased perfusion. Now, what, what, what does that mean? You know, like, I'm just throwing big words out there. This is perfusion, ischemia. Why are we alive as human beings today? It's because God gave us the ability to take in a deep breath. <gasps> Wait a minute. You take a deep breath. Which is what? Oxygen. If you take that deep breath, it goes into your lungs. Right? Beautiful little lungs. Right? And the lungs has little blood vessels running through it. Right? And the oxygen, so I'm just going to put a model right here, just to kind of give you a preview of pulmonary. It's to bring oxygen into your alveoli. Little hand pockets, air sacs, that exchange oxygen inside your blood. And releases CO2 back out. That is the reason why we are alive. If anything compromises this process, we get into trouble. So... In this case, I'm just trying to make it as very simple and basic to tell you where you can actually just reason out how can you develop metabolic. Anything that has to do with metabolic has to do at the cellular level. So remember, oxygen, we said, is going to be the, you know, grab the electron transport chain. You know, it's going to, you know, become water. Then you're going to need to make ATP. The ATP is what generates energy that's used by all your cells. Now, let me erase this real quick and show you where metabolic acidosis starts. So anything that prevents you from getting either oxygen, 
blood to your tissues, basically your tissues are going to be deprived of oxygen. When they're deprived of oxygen, if you did due to ischemia, that's the word we always use for it, decrease perfusion if there's not enough blood flow, right? Or if you're not, if you're not taking enough deep breaths into your lungs, you don't get enough oxygen, right? Or even if you're getting enough oxygen to your blood and it's not binding to hemoglobin, it's useless, like let's just see uh, carbon monoxide is binding to it. But anything that causes decreased perfusion, your heart is not even pumping the blood. What's the point? If the heart doesn't pump the blood, the tissues doesn't get it. So when the tissue doesn't get it, we call that what? Decreased tissue perfusion, which is basically what ischemia is. Now, I know this is going to drive you crazy, but bear with me. You need to learn this because that's the best way to understand. I'm going to bring in some biochemistry right now. Decreased oxygen to your tissues is going to force your body to utilize glucose, but when the glucose is made, instead of going through glycolysis, right? Remember, you learned that in the first year of medical school? Is that important? Yeah, it is important because glycolysis is going to form pyruvate. And instead of the pyruvate from becoming acetyl-CoA, which goes into the TCA cycle, right? It forms all those like NADH, and the NADH is going to, you know, electron donors, the blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. I'm not going to, you know, bore you to death. But the point is, this process is not going to occur. This only process can only occur in the presence of oxygen. If there's no oxygen, you force pyruvate to automatically become lactate. That's where your bread and butter begins. Because there's no oxygen to your tissues, they, form, they undergo what? Anaerobic metabolism. Ah, I get it. Anaerobic metabolism. So, let the party begin. Lactate. So we form lactate, right, from anaerobic metabolism. I'm going to drive you crazy. So instead of drawing organic chemistry out because that would drive you nuts, we're going to put a hydrogen ion because lactate is actually the lactic acid, right? Now, what happens? Your tissues start to make a lot of lactate. Although there's a Cori cycle, which lactate is eventually made into. But don't worry about it. That's not enough to compensate at this point. This hydrogen, excessive hydrogen ions, basically hydrogen ions are acids, right? They are going to be buffered by the bicarb. A buffer is anything that's able to like, you know, try to either compensate to prevent your pH from changing, whether it doesn't want to go too acidic or too basic. So automatically, hydrogen ions are going to be buffered. So I'm just showing where the hydrogen ions are going to be buffered from. By the bicarb in your blood. Wait a minute. That means this is gonna bind together to form bicarbonate. Right? Sodium bi I mean hydrogen bicarbonate. This hydrogen bicarb automatically now is gonna dissociate into water and CO2. Did you notice that this bicarb that came from your blood, right? It's always in the blood. It's just grab any hydrogen ions, try to buffer that blood, make sure it's stable. Now, there's so much lactic being pumped from your tissues, right? From anaerobic metabolism. So you see the pathway? That's where your bicarb decreases. Back to the definition. What was the definition of metabolic acidosis again? Low bicarb. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, and the pH drop because you're, you're making too much hydrogen iron. So the pH is low. That's it. That's it. That's where the money is coming from. Now, you're building up all the CO2 in your blood, right? It goes straight into your bloodstream from your tissues. When the CO2 gets in there, it has to go to the lungs, right? When it gets to the lungs, so I'm gonna just draw this, try to make it look better. When it gets to your lungs, 
this CO2 has to go into your lungs in exchange for oxygen. That's it. That's it. But that's the pathophysiology of how you develop metabolic acidosis. But we, we're going to talk about what actually causes decreased tissue perfusion that we talked about, the, you know, that we started talking about at the beginning. So this, from here on, we're going to move on to what actually causes this. Because if you don't know what causes this, there's no point, right? You might just know the pathophysiology, but if you don't understand what is causing it, we might as well just be wasting our time again. So let's move on to causes of metabolic acidosis. Now metabolic acidosis is divided into two parts. This is very important. I want you to listen very carefully. Let's just put causes right there. It's divided into two, so I'm going to break them into two. The first one is called gapped I mean increased and iron gapped I'm sorry here and normal and iron gap metabolic acidosis and increase MA for short for metabolic acidosis. Wait a minute. What is an iron gap? Oh, that's a new term. I never talked about that before. An iron gap. This is uh, when you come to the hospital or you know, even like you know, when you learn about different boards in your classes, you talk about an iron gap. But this is a very important concept. Because you first need to know what the formula is and I got by definition is basically the amount of irons inside your blood that we can't measure. We can't measure them. So for example, there's always a, I think in the BRS textbook, they usually show the major most, the most common iron inside your blood is sodium, right? So it takes quite a chunk. Then you have by do you have chloride next and bicarbonate. So this is like a sample of a serum, and there are just all little little anions that we can't measure. So what will happen is this. I want you to memorize this formula because it's very very important. The normal anion gap. Some textbooks say 8 to 12, some say 8 to 15, you know, like, I just stick to one number, I don't like complicated stuff, I pick 12, so 12, let's, I drew with 12, so, what they're trying to teach you is, this, is either this anion gap can either be increased or normal, and I'll tell you exactly what causes an increased anion gap, and what causes normal anion gap, but in this case, all I want you to focus on is, if say the bicarb decreases like in metabolic acidosis because we said and, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute like the formula of that you really need to focus on but if this bicarb starts to decrease just look at my graph here right and bicarb becomes really low did you see this space is automatically going to be higher compared to the beginning that is increased anion gap that's where they get it from they, that means the number of unmeasured, like phosphates, sulfates, proteins.